But I want to give you something that I think will help you to eliminate conflict from your life forever. And it's four words. And I'd like you to memorize these four words. And you don't have to write them down because it's going to be very simple. But think about these four words. Because if you practice using them, now you can use them anytime, with anyone, in any circumstance. You can use them with your spouse. You can use them with your business partner. You can use them with a waiter, waitress. You can use them baggage handlers, rude people on, uh, who are not taking care of you the way you want to be in a restaurant, whatever it might be. You can use this. Here are the four words. Now you practice these, you use them on a daily basis. And after a while, you don't even have to use the words. You can just hold up four fingers. And here they are. Ready? You're right about that. Okay? You're right about that. Now this, to me, is the worst audience that I think I've ever been associated with. I can't imagine a group of more boring and dull people than I've encountered over here today talking to you all day. Now, the beauty of this is that it doesn't make the other person right. Okay, my wife and I practice this all the time. We're getting very, very good at it. Now, she's still just as wrong as she's always been. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. She's still wrong. But she believes that she's right. And that's what the ego needs. Now, if you ask her, she'll tell you the very same thing. <laughs> that I'm still as wrong as I always have been. But she allows me to believe that I'm right. So what is it that the ego needs that the higher self doesn't need? The higher self just wants peace. The ego, the part of us that believes that we're separate from each other, from God, from our environment, this part of us that dominates our lives wants something else. It wants to be right. So you let people believe that they are. It doesn't make them right. It just gives them the opportunity to believe that they're right. And it saves so much conflict in your life. Now, a lot of times my wife and I will just hold up four fingers. She'll say something, and rather than speaking, I'll just go like this and hold the four fingers up. And she says, you know, I really hate it when you do that. And I say, honey, you're right about that. I tell my kids all the time how right they are, you know. I just say, I follow them around. I say, come on, say something stupid. <laughs> I need some material. <laughs> Let's put their hands on their hips and like... I was on CNN a while back, a few months ago. I was on with uh, James Redfield, uh, the author of The Celestine Prophecy, and Doreen Virtue, who's written some books on angels and so on. And we were appearing at an expo in Atlanta, and they asked the three of us if we would come down and do sort of a, a talk about the new spirituality and what it means in relationship to, quote, the old spirituality, as if there is new and old in this. I've always believed you can't organize spirituality anyway. And that a truth is a truth until you organize it. And then it often becomes a lie because the organization of it becomes more important than what it was organized for in the first place, than the truth that is being So you can't organize spirituality. But anyway, I said, sure, I'll come on. And I got on and I started talking about some of the things I'm talking about here in this program and so on. And the show's called Talk Back Live. And, uh, they have a live audience, and they were asking people. And, and I was getting phone calls from all of these compassionate, loving, kind people who are part of a fundamentalist philosophy. And people were calling in and telling me what a jerk I was, and how stupid I was, and how unreasonable I was. And you don't realize, and don't understand, and you don't have it right. And it says here in this Bible, and it says in the, this way, and this is the way you ought to think. And there was a lot of that sort of coming at all of us for talking about things like love, <laughs> kindness, compassion, as a way of living, rather than being too consumed with the organization and so on. People were calling in and getting violent and angry and threatening. And every time they would do it, 
I would say, you know, you're right about that. That's a very good point you're making. And that was it. It's like trying to pick a fight with somebody who won't fight with you. When you don't allow yourself to let your ego rule, and instead you shift into a state in which you just allow people to believe that they're right. And I talked on that show, on CNN, about the four words that will end all conflict. And I got hundreds of pieces of mail about just that and how much it has helped people in their relationships. Just by simply stopping yourself before you're about to respond, asking yourself, do I want conflict or do I want peace? And then letting the person know that they're right. You're right about that. It's so easy. It's so sweet. And it doesn't have to be something that you do disrespectfully. It doesn't have to be a gimmick. You can use variations on the theme. I've never considered that before. You know, you, you're making a good point. I acknowledge what you're saying. But you have to free yourself from this need to make somebody else wrong.